Hello YouTube, welcome to your fourth C++ tutorial. In this tutorial video, I will show you how to create your first Hello World program. In order to get started, you have to create a C++ file. So what you want to do is you want to click on New File, or you can go up to, oops, nah, I did not want to do that. Or you can go up into File. Now, I'm on Mac right now. You can do this in Windows. It just looks a little bit different, but the same settings are there. Um, I like to hit this button. It's standard on both uh, operating systems. So you click that and you go down to file because you're creating a C++ file. Now as I explained in the first tutorial, the introduction, the code that you type on your keyboard is called the source code. So you want to create the source. You can hit next. Make sure that you have C++ checked. It should be checked by default. And now just like on Windows, it'll ask you for the file name with full path. So you go to where you're going to store your file, so I'm going to have mine on Dropbox. Um, and we're going to call this tough4.cpp. On Windows, I don't, I think it might add the extension for you. On Mac, you explicitly have to say .cpp, even though it has format down here. And to double check yourself, scroll all the way over and make sure the .cpp is at the end. Now, a thing to know also, if you're using Mac, for some reason, if it does not like any spaces or apostrophes or quotes or anything in the file path at all whatsoever. So that's why I have these underscores in here. Otherwise, it won't even let you compile even though you have your code, well, possibly you have your code correctly. So after you're done with that, go ahead and hit finish. Now, this is your, your uh, coding screen right here. You can take up as many rows as you want, as many columns. You're not limited to an 80 character width like on COBOL, um, you can come all the way across the screen, scroll over. I mean, typically it's not a good idea to go all the way across. It's good to consider those who have smaller screens. I had a programming teacher that said try to make your programs about 80 to 100 characters um, wide. So, I mean, that'd be like one, two, three, four, you get the idea, 80 characters. It usually put it about right here because he had a smaller screen. So anyways, to get started, enough rambling. First, we have to um, tell uh, the compiler. I'm going to refer to the IDE as the compiler. I'm just going to say the compiler because eventually it's going to be compiled, even though I'm working in the ED IDE, which is the editor. Anyways, we have to have some kind of file that tells what kind of commands you're going to use. Well, for this basic program, we're going to output the text hello world to the screen. But for right now, we got to delete that because there's a few housekeeping things we have to do. So first, we're going to include the IOStream library. Basically, what this does, IOStream stands for input-output stream. Basically, it's inputting and outputting text or whatever else. Input devices are considered the mouse, the keyboard. Uh, for these tutorials, it's all going to be the keyboard because it's all going to be either command prompt or terminal-based. Um, but then the output devices will be considered or that are considered are the screen you can have the printer as an output device um, for these tutorials though I'm just gonna have the screen you could even have like a second monitor you could have just I mean there's a ton of different input output the ba most basic is the keyboard input the computer screen output and this is a library full of commands that allow you to output and input stuff okay next you want to have using name space std no not std um, that you can catch it comes from HIV whatever anyways or yeah not HIV what am I talking about anyways std using namespace std what this does is it tells the compiler where the commands are coming from yeah you said you have stuff from this library but eventually you're gonna have a ton of different libraries just you can have as many libraries as you want and basically each library will have its own set of things so this one right here is associated with input and output um, there are libraries that are associated with file input file output so instead of outputting to the to the screen you'll output to a text file or whatever so there are some cases where you'll have multiple instances you'll have some commands that are labeled the same and basically this using namespace std says that 
this is the standard library where the commands will come from. Okay, don't dwell over this line too much. You'll just get used to it, it'll make sense. It'll be one of them things you know, but maybe you can't explain 100%. So next, a program is made up of functions. So we have to create our main function, okay? Now, for right now, we're just gonna have int main. That's just declaring a function. This says what kind of function it is. Well, it's an integer function. Don't worry too much about that right now. Now, the parentheses, that's considered parameters, but for this main function, it'll nine, time, nine times out of 10, maybe 99 times out of 100, it'll be blank. Now these curly braces, it's considered the scope of the function or the grouping for that function. So basically, anything you have inside here, this is all part of the main function. And notice if you click one of these braces, it gives you the opening one and the closing one, no matter which one you're on. So that way you know all of the stuff inside is part of this main function. Now if you have you know, chicken wings outside of the main function, well, this is part of something different. This is not part of the main function because it's outside of the braces. So the braces just tell the compiler or C++, hey, I'm all set with my function. I'm all done with that. Let's move on to something else. Okay, so now we want to output hello world to the screen. Well, we have to start off with a C out statement, which comes from this IO stream library. Now, hopefully not to confuse you too much, say that we took out this line right here. Well, you wouldn't be able to just use C out. You would actually have to say STD, oops, sorry about that, STD C out. This just says C out comes from, you know, the STD area. Well, now we're going to put this back, and it allows us just to say C out, because C out, well, C out is assumed that it's coming from STD, um, and that's all part of IO stream. So we want to have C out now. What do we want to do is we want to throw something into the output stream. So what we do is we use the insertion operators. And basically what it does is it takes everything to the right of these operators and it adds it to C out, which then C out displays everything on the right on the screen. I know I kind of talked in circles a little bit, but I'm just trying to explain it clearly. So we want to say hello world, right? Okay, so let's see if we can compile this. And error. Okay, well, <clears throat> back up a little bit. Every time you write code, code is broken down into statements. So if you wanna do three things inside the function, you'd have three statements, okay? Typically, each line of code is its own statement, typically. So I'm all done with this C out statement, hello world, so I put this um, semicolon which says, Okay, and that statement, it's kind of like in COBOL, you use periods, semicolons is just C++'s niche. So, it's saying right here, hello was not declared in this scope. Hmm. Well, basically what C++ is trying to do is it's trying to look at a variable, hello. Well, hello isn't a reserved word. Reserved words, as you may have noticed, are bolded in blue. Not necessarily bolded, but the, well, maybe they are. They're bolded in blue. Uh, the font color has obviously changed. Well, hello is just a word. It doesn't mean anything as far as C++ goes. It's just a word that we know. It's an English word. It's not a machine code word. So basically, it's trying to say, okay, where's the hello variable? Is it part of IO stream library? the IO stream library? Where are you getting this hello? Well, since it's just text, it's a sentence. It's not a number. We're not manipulating anything. Since it's just text, you want to put double quotes around it. Now, CodeBlox has this thing where if you do double quotes, you obviously have to start the double quotes and end the double quotes. So what it does is it automatically puts in two for you. This is actually kind of annoying and I don't like it. And if you go up into settings, click on editor, and where it says brace completion, you can uncheck that box and that'll undo that. However, this is only on the Windows. I'm not sure if it works on Linux or not. Do not, 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 not do this on Mac because it'll crash code blocks for some reason. That's an unstable aspect of code blocks on the Mac. But anyways, I guess I'll just have to get over it for now. So wherever you open 
a double quotes, okay, that says, okay, this is where the sentence, this is called a string, but basically it's just a whole bunch of characters. The H is a character, the E is a character, basically letters that 